We're going to talk about uh, Power Platform and Microsoft 365 animation tips and techniques. Uh, we're going to talk about an extension that I've been working on trying to make little, you know, things that can take a while and require a bunch of repetitive effort a little easier inside of a VS Code extension. Uh, today, we're going to talk about dynamic variables. So uh, my name, again, is David Warner. Uh, I work for Microsoft, and I am hosting the call, and you probably uh, already know me. But if not, hey, check out my blog. I try to help out the community as well. So just looking at our agenda, again, I kind of share this one each time. The best investments uh, is the tools of one's own trade, right? So we've got lots of resources available to us. So we're going to talk about dynamic SVG animations and Power Apps. Some of you may be familiar. Some of you may not. So we're going to cover some of the base uh, baseline fundamental information there. Then we're going to get into inserting variables using that powerful animations VS Code extension. So I'll showcase that. Uh, and then we'll talk about kind of what's next. What are we growing from there? Where's the roadmap taking us uh, and all that. So where we're going to work today is within VS Code. So if you're not familiar with VS Code, it is a free development tool. Don't let that scare you if you're just getting introduced or starting out a power platform. Uh, it's a free tool. It is wonderful. Uh, it's, you can use it for SVGs, which we'll showcase today, uh, but you can use it for JSON and all kinds of other things. You can get access to that at ak.ms slash VSC. Uh, so uh, Download it, 100% free. You can even customize it. You'll see I've customized it to my my typical orange and purple, which just kind of makes it a little more yeah happy, warm fuzzies when you're working within it. Um, so. We're going to talk about today a VS Code extension that I created uh, for the community, absolutely free, aka.ms slash VSC slash Powerful Animations. Again, it's animation support. It's got very humble beginnings. I still have it in preview. Uh, we're going to be expanding it even more, so looking forward to all these additional cool things that are coming up and available to you. Uh, one of the first things that we showcased for those that maybe didn't see the first time is the ability to convert quotes, right? So when you're working with SVGs, uh, it's going to uh, have a certain quote set up in it, you need to convert that, right? So we want to search and replace double quotes with single quotes for pasting into Power Apps because that's how you do it. And I'll show a demo of that. Uh, but that can be a little bit laborious sometimes if you're working within and repeating and making changes and having to do that over and over and over. Uh, so it can be a little bit problematic and it just starts feeling like a repetition. So this particular function, which I'll showcase and show you again just as a refresher, uh, does that automatically for you. It, it replaces that need to do it manually and you can do it in one fell swoop. But what we're really going to focus on today is uh, the conversion of properties that go from static to dynamic, because that is possible to do. So we're going to replace some of those hard-coded animation properties, things like length and repetition and colors. Those can absolutely be replaced, and they can be dynamic in Power Apps, which is really, really cool. Uh, but it can be, again, a little bit of a laborious task to have to work within something like VS Code or even CodePen, uh, make your changes, copy it into uh, into Power Apps, make the changes there, go back to VS Code, undo it, or whatever the case may be. So uh, we are going to be taking a look at that. All right, so let me kick it off. I'll bring up VS Code, and what we have here uh, is just a, a little SVG. I can see that right up here. It's just a demo SVG. There's another utility that I'll include a link for at the end uh, that allows you to preview SVGs. So when I bring that up right here, you can see it started doing its little rotation, just a little football. For those that are fans of football, the schedule kicks off tomorrow, so I know we're all excited. thought this is kind of timing right. Uh, but there's a bunch of things that can be modified. So if we look over here at the CSS, we can see one of the things uh, is uh, an, a repetition, right? So I've got that set as one. So when I loaded it, you notice that it kind of flipped once, right? Like it was, I don't know, maybe just getting ready to be kicked through the air or something like that if we didn't have the shadow. Uh, but I can change that. Now, this particular class uh, is just for that background red color. So I'm not going to change everything. I'm just, I'm going to change it here to show you the experience, right? So notice that background color continued to rotate more than once. The rest, the rest of our CSS is all still going a rotation of one. Right, so that's what's going on there. And again, if you're not familiar with CSS, don't let it overwhelm you. There's lots of tools that we're going to talk about. There's lots of things that I'm starting to add in here that are going to give you the ability to make it easier and easier. But for now, we're just changing one property. So if I change it back to one, you see the football just continues to rotate once. And if I change it to two, then we see that background layer. I could go change all of my layers to two and we would continue to see it flip. You could change things like color and all that kind of stuff, right? So let's say now that I want to add this SVG into my uh, Power App. Well, as we mentioned, we would have to come in and convert all these double quotes to single quotes, right? Because when we add it into Power Apps, we're adding it actually in between a function that kind of parses it and processes 
processes it for us. Uh, so one of the things I showcase, and we won't spend too much time on this, uh, is that I can convert to single quotes, right? So I've got this powerful animations convert to single quotes option. And what that does is for everything that I've selected, it automatically processes and converts those double quotes to single quotes. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and re-invoke that convert to single quotes. We see here on the bottom uh, that it says beginning converting single quotes and text copy to clipboard. So it automatically adds it to the clipboard for us. So now when I go back over into Power Apps, uh, let me set the context here. I've got a component that I've started creating, right? We see it right here. I've got a couple of pieces to that component uh, with a screen on each for a dynamic variable. For now, though, we're just going to add it into uh, our dynamic variable called Power Anim, and one is called Powerful Animations. And really, the only difference here is that one has a space and one doesn't, so we'll kind of talk about that in a moment. But I'm going to expand my image. I've preset an image there. Uh, I've got the data wrapper, right? So this is what that data wrapper looks like for encoding the URL. And again, it's got double quotes here, and that's why we need to put ours in single quotes. So if I paste that in, then we see, bam. Great, right? Our football's there, we see it rotating, uh, and we can do that. Now, uh, what I've also done is inside of my component here, I've created a custom property. So for those that are maybe unfamiliar with this, this is the ability to create a custom property within your component. And what I've done is called it animation repetition. It's set up as a number, right? And so if I look at the details uh, of that, we can see the display name is animation repetition. The actual name of it, which we'll use inside of our code is animation repetition, uh, and then a number of times to repeat animation and input a number. Uh, and so we're able to, to use that <clears throat> within our SVG. So that's pretty cool. So how, how does that work? Well, if I click back on the image here and I expand that back down and we'll pull this back down and move to the top. If I wanted to change uh, that property right there, that little one number, and I wanted that to be taken from that dynamic property, then what I do is I come in here and I say, powerful or power, uh, power anim, right? So we see that right there is my component. So I'm going to come back and select that, uh, hit dot, <clears throat> and we see I now can access my dynamic property. So I created that, right? So I'll just each time I that it uh, uh, let's see. Power Apps does get kind of crazy like this. There we go. Sometimes you got to reset it. So I select that. Uh, and then I will do an ampersand and another closing quote. So what that does is you see it went away when I was processing all of that. Uh, but now what happens, what this does is it makes that dynamic, right? It makes it configurable. So now I can change that on the fly, right? So if I change this, close this, and then just click on the actual component here, and you'll notice that it's uh, defaulted for me here to animation repetition. If I were to change this to two, now we see that our back layer, again, we could assign that to as many layers as we want, uh, is dynamic. Uh, so not 32, I can see it for 32. But if I change it here, then we see it rotates three times, right? So we've made this a dynamic variable, which is pretty cool into in and of itself, right? And you could apply this, we could have ones here for whether we want it to, uh, how long we want the animation to be, maybe if we want to change colors, uh, something like that, right? So this is all pretty basic out of the box stuff that we can absolutely do. But as you could imagine, as I click in here, so I've gone in and it took me, you know, a few seconds, I could have snippets or something to go in and add this each time. And so if I want to make changes to my SVG, I'm probably not going to make it within here, right? I'm, I'm likely going to want to make it within VS Code because I've got this cool other extension that lets me preview it. So all my changes are actually real here, and that's great. So if you're wanting to edit your SVG, then you kind of have to repeat that each and every single time, which, I don't know, to me feels like it gets old and becomes kind of... Uh, I don't know, boring or repetitive in a bad way, right? So we, we maybe have a better way. So what I did is I created uh, a function in the VS Code extension that does that for us. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that number one right there, right? Because that's the one we want to change. Uh, and then I'm going to re-invoke my extension uh, using Control-Shift-P, and I'm going to click Insert Variable Name. Right. And so what happens is when I do that, uh, it asks me, well, hey, what's the parameter name for that you would like to use? So each time I zoom out, it redoes it, insert variable. Name. So I'm going to paste in power anim dot animation repetition. 
and I'm going to hit enter. And, and what happens is uh, it adds in all of that information for me. So it automatically adds the double quote, the ampersand, adds the name of that, uh, and of course the uh, suffix ampersand and double quote. So now I'm going to select all that. I'm going to hit control shift P again. I'm going to convert to single quotes because again, we have to do that. And then I'm going to come back over to my, uh, to my, to my power app and I'm going to delete that and I'm going to go reinsert that. And you'll notice that it you know, went away. When I come back up, there it is. That's great. So if I were to then close this, come back here and change this to four, then we're going to see that thing continuing to rotate four times, right? Uh, if There we go. It just continues to go. So it, it's not too bad, right? It's a simple function. Again, humble beginnings for this. But the intent is that now if I want to come back in and make changes, I just come back here, I control Z, it takes out the, uh, ex or the uh, dynamic variable property, um, and I can continue to make edits to my SVG, right? No problem. Uh, and then when I need to do it again, there is a little bit of uh, process here in adding it back in, but it's a little easier because you're not having to go back into VS Code and, or excuse me, into Power Apps and uh, manually paste it in or anything like that. Uh, it just gives you a little bit of uh, functionality. And, and you'll notice that it does also work. So if I go back to uh, here, my Power App, uh, let me go here, uh, and we go into the powerful animations. Again, that's a different name, right? So it's actually got um, a space in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab just for the sake of time, um, I've got another uh, snippet here. So I'm just going to take that. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to say uh, insert variable name, and I'm going to paste because you'll notice that in this case, <clears throat> when there's a space in it, right, uh, it adds single quotes, and that's what is needed. So it'll automatically add single quotes there for you because there's a space in it, um, and so we want to we want to use that. It will handle that, right? So we can add that in. Hit enter. It adds that in, and now if I convert to single quotes, it copies it to my uh, clipboard. I'm able to go back into my Power App and paste that in, and there you go. It's working for that as well. So it does handle, if I scroll up, uh, those no problem. Because what, what we're doing is there's a little bit of smarts going on inside of the extension conversion. Uh, because what we've done here is we've added double quotes that are necessary, right? So these double quotes are necessary to be retained when we do the convert to single quotes. We're not just all up saying, okay, anywhere you find a double quote, convert it to a single quote. Because in this case, it would break this. If I were to change this to a single quote and, right, uh, and then do a convert to single quote, so I've already, I've already done that, convert to single quotes, copy and paste that over, and I'll come down here. That's SVG. Well, it's, it's not going to work. See, it, it sees an error already because uh, it would have auto converted those single quotes. And what we need these to be is double quotes. So we're not just doing a simple, easy uh, find and replace. It needs to actually work successfully. Um, and so we're, we're taking care of that inside of that conversion. So that's the other nice thing is sometimes it can can get a little cumbersome trying to remember exactly where all that has to be done. So this functionality takes care of all that for you. Uh, which is kind of kind of slick. Now you may think, well, okay, you're absolutely right, uh, but the problem is you're still doing this monotonous kind of thing, and that's true. Um, so what what I wanted to show off, uh, but was erring on me, so I got to fix it and finish it, uh, is the ability to do even more. We're publishing soon this feature. What's coming soon is the ability uh, to. Uh, we've got animation libraries, dynamic search and replace, but all in one fell swoop, right? So what I'm looking to do is add the variable, uh, convert quotes, and reset to original state. So what does that mean? So it means that I'll create a combo function that does all of those things for you. So what I plan on doing is saying in here, if, if I needed to add that uh, variable, right? Say it is the power anim dot animation repetition. Uh, and I want to do this. What it'll do is I'll come in here and I'll say, I'll have one that says like uh, convert or an insert variable name and prepare SVG. So I'll select that, I'll paste this in. And what it'll do is it'll add that. And then in one fell swoop, it'll select the entire SVG. It will convert single quotes to double quotes. 
and then it will reset this to the original value and copy what's needing to be done into your clipboard, right? So the process is you'll come in here, it'll look like this on your screen, you will add the variable, right? It'll do this and then in a matter of a split second, it'll add this variable, it'll select the entire SVG, it'll convert single quotes to double quotes or convert double quotes to single quotes and then it'll copy it to your clipboard and it'll reset it to this. So you're back at your original state. Your uh, clipboard is already filled with what you need it to be filled with. You go over to your Power App and you paste it in. And then when you need to make changes, you don't have to manually undo them in VS Code. It's already taken care of for you, right? So it's kind of this combo package that you'll get that does it all for you. So this, the intent is that the seamlessness while you're doing your modifications to your SVG is nice. You come in, if you're doing your testing, and that's what this is great for, just doing your quick testing. You add it in, uh, you, you add your variable, you go over to Power Apps, you test it, it looks good. You come back, you're ready to start moving again. You don't have to undo any of the changes like we've seen here. Again, just all one fell swoop action for you, the combo package. So I'm gonna be getting that published out soon. Be on the lookout for that, really excited for that one. And of course, some other things that we're doing is again, we're looking for a dynamic property search and replace. So for example, if uh, you have multiple areas in which you would like to uh, search and replace something and uh, you can go in and it'll, uh, it'll do that for you. So we saw that right here, if I were to change this to two, uh, not 21, just to two, then that layer, but there's more layers, right? So if I were to come down here and just kind of manually change these, so that's kind of repetitive, right? So uh, now we've got some of the football continuing and we'd have to go all the way through. And we could use the find and replace, obviously built into VS Code, but we'll have the find and replace done for uh, actually um, uh, for, for the, uh, the variables and everything is what I'm, uh, what I'm referring to. Uh, the other things that I'll be adding in, of course, is the uh, dynamic properties, the combo package. I'm gonna be adding in an animation library of icons. So we'll see that over on the left panel. Uh, where, where that will end up occurring is uh, right over here. So all these panels that are available over here, there'll be a, a powerful animations icon here that you'll be able to access. And it'll open up panels here that you can access stock animations with that I'll be creating things like spinners and some of those kinds of things that'll be easy. And then you can use the functionality to add it into uh, your Power App. Uh, and then uh, common animation snippets, right? So uh, it's hard to sometimes remember the exact syntax for things like uh, rotate and repetition. Uh, when you go back and look at, you know, the actual transform translate, some of this stuff, you don't always remember the exact syntax here. And if you're not always creating it all the time, uh, then it can be a little cumbersome. And, you know, you're like, oh, I got to copy and paste, which is fine. But if you've got snippets, then even better, right? So look for those things to be added. Uh, and one question in the chat from Elliot, does uh, this use CSS variables? Definitely on the roadmap. Uh, I don't necessarily know that it will work in Power Apps with that, right? We just kind of covered how the dynamic variables, CSS variables. What I would be looking to be doing actually uh, is when we add some of this stuff is adding some JavaScript here that will take care of it inside of VS Code. So you'll still see when you actually, when I do go in and add in the variable for Power Apps, you could leave it there because we'll set up JavaScript that will actually take care of it for you uh, for rendering here in VS Code. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. You'll be able to see if you were to add in, say, your Power Apps uh, variable. Uh, so again, I, I go and I do that and I say insert variable name, add that. It does this. You'll notice that that background wasn't moving. It's because inside of VS Code, it has no access to what that is. It knows it's something, but inside of VS Code, it doesn't know what it is. So I could add JavaScript that will populate that with a value. So as you add in your variables, you can leave them there, right? We talked about resetting it and all that, which is great for just quick testing if you don't, if you want to preserve the originality of your VS Code or your SVG. Uh, but in this case, we'd be looking to create some JavaScript that would allow you to just continue working and you can see the edits and the actual rendering results here in VS Code. So it's kind of the best of both worlds, right? Um, okay, all right, so let's get back and let's wrap this call up. So again, thank you. These are all the links that are available. I'll put them in the chat as well. Mm -hmm.